This is the last video for this section of the course. It introduces variation of parameters, the second method for solving non-homogeneous equations in the, this setting. Before I get into details, I need one new technical definition. If I have two differentiable functions, there is a strange combination of the functions and their derivatives called the Ront scheme. It is written w of f1 and f2 and calculated by f1 f2 prime minus f2 f1 prime. If anyone knows determinants from linear algebra, you can think of this as the determinant of this matrix. Otherwise, you can think of this as something similar to a product rule, where each function is multiplied by the derivative of the other, except this time there is a subtraction instead of addition. Let me call the, recall the general setup for these equations. I have a linear operator and a homogeneous equation. There are two linearly independent homogeneous solutions, y1 and y2, and then I can add a forcing term. Two videos ago, I introduced undetermined coefficients to find the particular solution. That was a really good method, but it only works for certain kinds of functions. For anything that is not a combination of exponentials, trig, and polynomials, undetermined coefficients doesn't help. I want a more general method. Variation of parameters is the more general math method. I actually introduced the idea back in first order equation, and the setup here is similar. I take the homogeneous solutions, which have the constants a and b, the parameters. Then I replace the constants a and b with functions, u1 and u2, to make the particular solution guess. The parameters are now functions, i.e. they have variables, so I have varied the parameters, hence the name. So this is the guess. Now I want to try and figure out if there are functions, u1 and u2, that make this work. It's a similar method to others we've seen so far. Make a particular guess for the solution and see if that guess works. If it does, find a way to determine the specific information about that guess. So here's the guess. I'll stop writing in brackets t, but u1 and u2 are still functions of t throughout. Here are their first two derivatives. It's a bit of a mess, but it's what I have to work with. And I want to put all of this into the equation. So here it is, all in the differential equation. It's quite a mess. How on earth does this help? Well, let me make some adjustments and see what happens. From the first to the second line here, I'm just going to rearrange everything. I've taken all the terms with u1, but not any of its derivatives, here. And then all the terms with u2, but again, not any of its derivatives, here. And I've grouped the remaining eight terms in a way that will make sense in a bit. These two expressions are just the operator L applied to y1 and applied to y2. But y1 and y2 are homogeneous solutions. That means that L applied to them is zero. So these two are zero, which removes six terms already, leaving only the remaining eight. Here are those remaining eight terms. I need to still be pretty clever here. Look at the first two terms in the bracket. I can spot, if I am very clever, that these are the outputs of a product rule. So I've written that on the second line, and please check if you wish. If I apply the product rule to this term in brackets, I do get precisely the first two bracketed terms from the previous line. All right, this narrows it down to six terms, but still not obviously helpful. What to do here? Well, I'm going to do something quite strange. I'm going to impose an equation. Why can I do this? Well, sometimes when there is a very general guess, and this guess was very general since u1 and u2 can be literally any functions at all, there might not be enough information to solve. There might be too much freedom in the system. So I'm going to impose this equation. Maybe there is a solution for, y, for u1 and u2 that also happens to abide by this equation. And the equation I've chosen is extremely convenient, since imposing this condition removes all but two of the terms. Since both of these terms are exactly the thing I've sent to zero, all that is left is this equation. All right, maybe this is progress. So this is where I found myself at the end of the step so far. I have two equations. The one I somehow just made up because I could, and the one thing that is left over from the differential equation. What does this do for me? 
Well, u1 and u2 only show up as first derivatives here. So if I again think really carefully, I can think of this as a system of equations in two variables, where the variables, the thing I'm trying to solve, are u1 prime and u2 prime. Two linear equations and two unknowns, that's solvable. Skipping the steps, which you can do by isolation and replacing or by linear algebra, the result is this. u1 prime and u2 prime are given by these expressions. These denominators are the string product rule-like comp combination that I defined at the start of the video, the Ronskian of y1 and y2. And this is actually where I wanted to get. I guess there were functions u1 and u2, and now I actually have a way to solve for u1 and u2. This is success. Well, I found the derivatives, so I need to integrate to actually calculate u1 and u2, but then the particular solution was u1 times y1 and u2 times y2. So I put these integrals in, and I actually have a way to calculate the particular solution. This is a method. It's a strange one, but it does work. I can find y1 and y2 from the homogeneous method, and then I can do these integrals to find the particular solution. Unlike undetermined coefficients, this doesn't depend on the form of f. As long as f is integrable, this works. You can just use this. Like the complicated methods in the first unit of this course, the complicated steps don't need to be repeated each time. Just go straight to these integrals and you have the particular solution. So after all that heavy and complicated setup, let's actually do an example. You'll find the examples actually not too bad. Here's a DE and its characteristic equation. The roots are one plus or minus i, so the homogeneous solutions are e to the t cos t and e to the t sine t. Then I need the Ronskian. I calculate the derivative, and the Ronskian is just these two terms minus these two terms. This simplifies a lot due to a sine squared plus cos squared equals one, and the Ronskian works out to just e to the two t. Once I have the Ronskian, I just do the integrals for u1 and u2. So here are the equations, and I put all the pieces in. I know f, I know y1, I know y2, I know w. Lots of terms cancel in these integrals, and u1 and u2 work out to 2 cos t and 2 sine t. Then the particular solution is u1 times y1 plus u2 times y2. And again, there's a nice sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 simplification. So the particular solution here is just 2 e to the t. And I put that with the homogeneous solutions to get the full solution. This is the method. It's pretty algorithmic. Calculate the Ronskian, calculate the integrals for u1 and u2, and then put it all together. Here is one more example. The previous example could have been done by undetermined coefficients, but this one can't. This, can't. this one needs variation of parameters. I'll start with homogeneous solutions via the characteristic equation. The solutions are e to the t and e to the negative t. The Ronskian, which I haven't shown the work for, has a bunch of nice simplifications and works out to just negative 2. Then I just go to the integrals for u1 and u2, and here are the forms. I put all the pieces in, y1, y2, w, and f, and I get these integrals. Now I have a bit of a problem, though. These integrals have no elementary solutions. They are integrable away from t equals 0, but I have no way to write the new functions. Therefore, I'm just going to leave the integrals. The integrals are the best way to describe these functions. I don't have a better one. I put u1 and u2 into the particular solution, and then I add the homogeneous solutions. And this is the final solution. It may see, seem strange to still have integrals in this, but it is really the best way. This is a solution. I don't know very much about how these functions behave, but this is still a decent way to describe them. I can honestly consider the differential equations solved by this expression.